Hey, what's up? My name is Rob, and I am the author of Machine, the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual, and the creator of Beat School. And um, basically, I wanted to bring something to your attention. I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you get a group of hip hop heads in a room together, specifically hip hop heads that are into the creation of music, so we're talking about producers and engineers, you're bound, you know, it's bound to come up. They're, they're going to talk about the good old days you know, back in the 90s, and they're going to talk about how music sounded so much more warm, more gritty back in the day, okay? And they'll get into the nuances of what's called analog warmth, you know? But what is analog warmth, and why does it make music back in the 90s and the late 80s, specifically hip-hop music in that golden era, sound so much better than the pristine and clean stuff that we hear today that's made in digital studios, digital recording studios, and how can you recreate that sound using your machine? That's exactly what I'm about to show you how to do right now using one of machine's stock effects, okay? So I'm gonna show you this technique in which you can recreate that analog warmth feel, that griminess, that, that uh, warmth, that warm, fuzzy sound of uh, analog gear and recreate that sound using the stock effects that came with your machine. So I'm gonna jump on over to machine. I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more about what it is and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can recreate that effect of that warm analog feel using your machine, okay? So let's jump on over there and get to it. So basically, what analog warmth is, it's a byproduct of um, the imperfections that come from recording on reel-to-reel uh, recording studios. So basically, back in the day, between the 1950s and the 1990s, during the eras of analog recording, people recorded on tape machines just like this one, the ones that you see on this on this screen right here. They're basically just reel-to-reel -reel analog tape recorders. And the effects of recording on this imperfect gear is that this gear has limitations. It has imperfections that are naturally built into the technology. Okay, so different variables come into play when you're recording music using reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. It's the the machine type, the circuitry of this machine, the the width of the tape that's being recorded itself. All all of that determines how the audio signal is ultimately affected and processed when it passes through from reel to reel on these tape machines. These machines automatically add a unique coloration and distortion to any sound that passes through that, okay? These old tape machines add a bit of, a little bit of compression, a little bit of limiter, a little bit of colorization, equalization to any sound that adds through it. And that in turn gives it more grit, more lushness, more energy, okay? And this is important for this reason. Let me explain that to you. For a lot of us, especially us older people who have grown up during the time of this golden era of analog recording equipment, we're used to the sonic imperfections that are imparted upon our music using these tape machines, okay? We're used to the lushness and the energy and that sonic texture, and we can recognize that instantly, okay? And it's not really scientific in that, you know, maybe or maybe it doesn't sound better to the human ear for some reason, to your brains, the imperfections that are passed upon in these tape machines, but our ears have become used to that texture because every piece of music that we have ever listened to before, you know, the 2000 era, even music that we listen to now is recorded using reel to reel stuff just to add more of that analog flavor. Okay. And we're used to that sonic texture. We're used to hearing it and our ears are expecting it whenever we listen to music. So that's something that we should pay attention to when we're making music because our ears and our listeners ears have become used to the imperfections that are imparted upon in this reel-to-reel -reel process, okay? That's why it's important to use this technique and to understand this, okay? So in order for us to recreate this technique, in order for us to recreate this sonic aura on our machine, we're going to have to use a specific effect that comes stock in your machine, and it's called saturation, okay? You've probably seen it on your machine before, but not known exactly in what situation you should be using it. And I'm going to show you today, okay? Sometimes it can be sort of elusive, but because today 
we are recording, you know, on machine in pristine situations because we're not using analog stuff. We're using digital signals. All of our circuitry and all the things that are going on and recording on computers and making music on computers are using digital signals. Digital signals don't have any imperfections. They don't have any flaws or odd circuitry like these old tape machines. So we have to impart that using our saturation plugin to add some more of that griminess and imperfection to our music, okay? So in this sort of segment right now, I'm gonna demonstrate to you a few different ways in which I'll utilize this tape saturation or the saturation plugin on machine in different various situations in order to get the effect that I need. All right, so let's jump on over. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on in this beat. I'm going to let you hear it without saturation. And I'm going to go back and show you how I would mix in some saturation into this process to improve certain elements, okay? So here's uh, the beat that I'm working with, something that I created the other day. All right, so you get it. Um, I enjoy this 90s feel, so what I'm going to do is show you specifically, I'm going to sort of break down this mix and show you some different points in which we can utilize Machine's tape, tape saturation plugin. The first is let's go ahead and jump in on the sub bass. Now, typically, I would not mix anything, any beats, um, out of context, meaning that I typically would not solo a sound and specifically mix it um, in this fashion, I'd make sure that everything else was playing so that we could sort of hear the interplay of what we're adding to the mix and see how it affects the surrounding sounds. But for the sake of this demonstration, just know that I want to let you listen to and really hear the subtleties of what's going on. So I'm going to use this uh, saturator um, in solo mode. So I'm going to show you exactly what's going on uh, with this sound in isolation. So let's, let's go ahead and listen to the sub bass sound. Okay, this is a typical situation in which I'll use saturation to sort of make the sub a little bit more fat and warm, all right? So this is a typical 808, so let's, let's listen to it. Okay, so basically at this point in the mix, I sort of added in this tape saturator in the first slot. And there are a few different modes. We've got classic, tape, and tube. Classic is more of like a, um, adds more crunch and aggression. There's a little bit more of a lo-fi feel to that. Tape, which is basically em emulating the uh, tape machine, the real-to-real -real tape machine that we saw. And then there's tube. So tube represents basically a... I guess a tube compressor or a tube saturator, which has different sort of circuitry and has a different overall feel. All right, in this situation, I found that tape sounded the best. And uh, as you notice, I sort of threw on another saturator at the second point in this series. So 
I can apply it sort of in chain like that, and it sort of allows me to uh, to see if, if that adds any more to the sound that's already going on, all right? So I'm gonna continue to mix this a little bit further and add another saturator, another point. So we've got these drums. I can also throw them on the drum group, okay? And that'll also add some more warmth to the overall drum groove, all right? So I'm gonna let you listen to that and show you how I'd mix this using saturation a little bit further. And we'll do some more advanced stuff as well. So let's let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so just to break down what I did, on the drum group itself, I added a tube saturator. And um, I sort of mixed this down um, to sort of sound a little bit more fatter. It added a little bit more fatness to the overall drum groove. Um, just to show you sort of what that effect was. Let's, let's play this really quick and turn off everything else. The effect of that tube saturator was a little bit more compression and more glue to all the sounds within that drum group. It sort of glues everything together and makes everything more unified. Um, it adds a really cool effect, so pay attention to that and I'm going to unsolo it again. Right? And on the master chain as well, we added some saturation. I threw in a saturator, a tape saturator, at the first place in the signal chain. In the second place in the signal chain, I also threw in a tube saturator. And in this situation as well, it works. A lot of people like to mix into compression on the master chain. So basically, it, uh, it adds a little bit more compression so that we, we stop our peak distortion and our digital distortion up here as well. That has that effect. And also it allows us to, just like in the drum group, glue everything within the mix together and make it sort of more unified and cohesive, everything that's working in the sound, to sort of glue everything together, together and give everything more of a unified feeling. Okay, So those are just a few examples of how to utilize compression in your beats. Obviously, though, if you've made it this far, you're serious about taking your beats on machine and your music to the next level, okay? Whether you're serious about musically just being able to create better music on machine or you want to take your music career to the next level, um, if you're looking to master machine's workflow, if you want to bust out more creative beats, if you want to create music on machine like I'm doing in this situation without even having to think about what I'm doing so that things just flow naturally and flow creatively, so the, the process of making Beats on Machine is actually fun instead of being a chore, then um, I think you should grab a copy of my book. It's called Machine, the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual. 
And um, the importance of this book is that this is the only in-depth guide in the world that shows you all the steps outlined from beginning to end, from mastering machines, hardware, and software, to putting together hard drum grooves on machine, to perfecting the arrangement of your beat, to constructing sample-based beats, how to chop and flip samples creatively, how to sample from YouTube, how to utilize machine stock effects like compression and tape saturation and equalizers and all of this in detail. It shows you everything from start to finish that you need to know in order to make release-ready be- release ready hip-hop beats using the machine platform, okay? That's the problem for a lot of us. A lot of us rely upon resources like YouTube, okay? And YouTube is great for getting your feet wet. But the problem is is that it leaves you hanging because it only ever provides you with incomplete information. It only gives you a glimpse into sort of what you need to know. It doesn't give you in-depth, okay? It, it only gives you pieces of the puzzle at once and not the bigger picture. And this is where this book comes in handy because it's the in-depth guide that shows you exactly what you need to do in order to make better beats. How to master your machine's hardware and software so that you can work more quickly, more efficiently, and effectively to make better music on machine. And it's all inside of this book, all right? And here's the great news. It gets even better. This guide is normally pretty expensive, okay? I sell it typically for 49 bucks, okay? But over the past few years, I've sort of figured out that I do better from a from a business perspective. I am able to build more relationships. I'm able to um, influence more people and help more people by selling this book for a lesser price, okay? In order to get my brand out there, in order to improve my or increase my following on online, I need to get this book into the hands of as many people as possible. So today I'm testing out a pricing strategy that allows you to get this book for literally $1, okay? No strings attached. This is not a joke. This is not a scam. There are no hidden tricks. Literally $1, okay? Um, Basically, click the link below in the description. You're gonna be taken to a page like this where you'll find out more information about exactly what's inside of this book. And um, you'll also be able to enter in your payment information, your name, your email address, your number, and your your payment information. And you can literally get your copy of this 89-page guide that will teach you from start to finish everything that you need to understand in order to get a thorough understanding of how to utilize machine to make great music for just a buck. Okay, it's that simple. I promise you that you're really going to love the information inside of this guide. I promise you that by grabbing a copy of this book, you're going to be making the smartest investment that you've ever made in your music. Okay, so click the link below. Grab your copy of this book now for just a buck before the price raises. Again, my name is Rob. I am the author of this book, Machine the Hip Hop Beat Maker's Missing Manual, and the author of the hiphoprally.com blog. There's a lot of great other information that I have on this blog for free that will teach you techniques about machine and um, basically how to utilize your machine to make better music, all right? So subscribe to this channel for more updates and great resources and great tips and techniques and inspiration about how to utilize the machine to make better music. Go ahead and check out the blog and grab your copy of this book right now, all right? So I look forward to talking to you soon, man. Holler at you later. Peace.